but he just happens to be one of its representatives. And what this is, is a turning upside down of everything. As we see old institutions that no longer help us, that no longer it's not an easy process uh, as I talked about um, uh, over a year and a half period when I was doing the uh, transition era programs this is a process of taking steps forwards and then pulling them back because as these institutions start to dissolve they un understand in, a, in sort of a primitive sense that they're dissolving and they try to hold on uh, people who don't know what's next and are afraid of what might be next try to prop up the old systems that really aren't working very well, but they're are, uh, what we've got right now, what we're used to. And so this process goes on as the dissolving process continues until there's no problem. So just be aware of that. I'm talking about instant change here. I am talking about evolution, evolving change, if you will. But it is being speeded, sped up rapidly by this sort of turning upside down of things and also by um, the new technologies that allow us to do things at a more rapid pace and so therefore our change is becoming more rapid um, and the rapidity of that also uh, scares some uh, into pulling back. But it continues forward anyway. So in talking about the future we want, that's what we have to be focused on. These things are changing. These things are upside down. And, and when we're faced with that, we're, we have the perfect moment to make the choices we want to make. And that means making the future what we want it to be. This time of year, as we get through to the end of December, we get to the holidays and the new year, we start thinking about new life and the future and what's ahead for us uh, in the following year and beyond. And so it's a great time to start looking at the future we want. This is a great time in our history to start asking those questions. So we're going to be talking about different aspects of life that could change because it's the future we want. So one of these aspects is the economy. And perhaps, and there are quite a few people who agree with this and um, certainly a lot of millennial ideas and energy and uh, desire support this the idea of the resource-based economy a resource-based economy it's a whole factor social economic system in which all goods and services are available without the use of money credits barter or any other system of debt or servitude. All resources become the common heritage of all of the inhabitants, not just a select few. The premise upon which this system is based is that the earth is abundant with plentiful resources. Our practice of rationing resources through monetary methods is irrelevant, counterproductive to our survival. In a resource-based economy, all of the world's resources are held as the common heritage of all of Earth's people, thus eventually outgrowing the need for the artificial bounds, boundaries that separate people. This is the unifying imperative. Our vision of globalization empowers each and every person on the planet to be the best that they can be, not to live in abject subjugation to a corporate governing body. Now I know the G word globalization is is um, has become a, a a bad word for some. This is a different kind of idea about globalization. 
I think the negative reaction to globalization comes with the idea that um, some people in some countries are taking things away from other people in other countries. And that's not what globalization means. Globalization means connectedness, that we're all giving to each other and uh, we all are that is uh, beneficial to all and uh, this idea of resource-based economy reflects that um, and actually what it is is it's a return to what where we started you know it's only been in I guess if you look at it from a broad historical context relatively recently and by that I mean in the past several uh, hundred years in which we've had an idea that land and resources belong to one person or a group of people or one family or or even one uh, ruling government. Uh, that's an illusion. It, it's an illusion that we bought into so heavily we just take it for granted. But that's not the truth. The truth is everything belongs to all of us. But we've created an illusion of separateness. I take this and now it's mine. And you can't have it unless unless you do something for me. And then I'll give it to you or let you use it for a while. That kind of thing. Um, the idea of land ownership, which uh, upon which most of... Our economy, in fact, this country was built on the idea of landowners being um, special people. The idea that you could own land is relatively recent in human history. And it, it really is something that comes from, uh, well, it, it comes from the European model. I guess it, it goes back to that. This idea that you can somehow buy a plot of land and it belongs to you and you alone. Um, at the time it was thought that that was an orderly way to do things so that people knew where they should be and where they shouldn't be. But what it has become is something that is used to subjugate people. And it became that very quickly. I mean, it, it really did. Uh, but more and more, as we become more aware of the truth of this, there is more uh, understanding that it needs to change. So, uh, the commons, as it, as it were, the commons that from which we draw all of our resources, um, belongs to all of us. And those who use it don't own it. So we'll think about a uh, resource-based economy for a bit, and we'll probably talk more about that as we talk about the future we want. But how will it improve our quality of life, or will it? Uh, it's suggested that a resource-based economy would utilize existing resources from the land and sea, physical equipment, industrial plants, etc., to enhance the lives of the total population. In an economy based on resources rather than money, we can easily produce all of the necessities of life, provide a high standard of living for all, universal health care and more relevant education, and most of all by generating a new incentive system based on human and environmental concern. Our vision of globalization empowers each and every person on the planet to be the best that they can be, not to live in abject subjugation to a corporate governing body. Our proposals would not only add to the well-being of people, but they would also provide the necessary information that would enable them to participate in any area of their competence. The measure and success would be found on the fulfillment of one's individual pursuits rather than the acquisition of wealth, property, and power. 
by overcoming the uh, illusion of scarcity, most of the crimes and even the prisons of today's society would no longer be necessary. In a more humane civilization, instead of machines displacing people, they would shorten the workday, increase the availability of goods and services, and lengthen vacation time. If we utilize the new technology uh, to raise the standard of living for all people, then the infusion of machine technology would no longer be a threat. So we wouldn't be hearing this uh, stuff about AI <clears throat> and robots taking over our world and all of that. With the elimination of debt, the fear of losing one's job will no longer be a threat. How about that? Huh? This assurance could reduce mental and physical stress and leave us free to explore our abilities. How about that? Think about how much time we devote to that. You know, paying off of debts, holding on to a job, or finding another one if you lose one. To be free of all that. <clears throat> in a positive way. In a way that where you can live a high standard of living and not be stressed out by those things. We have access to highly advanced technology uh, and can make available food, clothing, housing, and medical care, update our educational system, develop a limitless supply of renewable, non-contaminating energy. By supplying an efficiently designed economy, everyone can enjoy a very high standard of living with all of the amenities of a high technology society. Technology can do that for us. We have 3D printing, which is you know, growing by leaps and bounds, which means that we literally can create anything that we need. The idea of the abundance of the world, the abundance of uh, our existence, that we have everything we need right here, right now. That's where we're headed. How long it takes to get there, who knows. All right, we're going to come back and talk about this next week, so but we're running out of time here, so I want to... Uh One of the most popular and common spices uh, in the world, which is black pepper. And it's amazing uh, powers. <clears throat> Believe it or not, this little, <coughs> uh, pardon me, this little spice that uh, we've been using all our lives, most of us, uh, has amazing powers. Uh, it comes from the black pepper pant, uh, <laughs> the black pepper plant. Uh, which is native to Asia. It's a whole partially ripened fruit, actually. Uh, and the seed is peeled, and that's where the black pepper comes from. And it gives you serious health benefits. It's a proven antibacterial agent. And compounds in the spice can help protect the integrity of your DNA as well, making it poss a possible weapon against cancer. It can also aid in the absorption of healthy anti-inflammatory spices uh, like turmeric is an anti-inflammatory spice. Now this is all according to Dr. Weil on his website drweil.com uh, if you want to know more about black pepper and its uh, amazing benefits uh, and some of the things that uh, you know the negative uh, aspects of it too for instance, um, you wouldn't want to consume it in high quantity because it can cause urinary tract infections and things like that. Uh, but if you want to know more about that, you can definitely uh, log on to drwild.com. And I'll leave a link to that on my website, which is uh, H. Wilkinson Media at Facebook. So just log on to Facebook. Uh, slash H Wilkinson Media, and you'll come up on my metaphysical media page, and I will definitely be posting this article along with my uh, uh, program today. So please do uh, check me out on Facebook, H Wilkinson Media, and uh, 
leave any comments that you might have too. I'd love to hear from you.